Courtney, your yoga teacher from Grand Park. Join me up next for five minutes of ease. today, I just want to give a little context for yoga philosophy. Um, so yoga says that when we settle into knowing ourselves, we feel and share our community with all, our humanity with all, um, which I feel like is a really beautiful part of the practice. And um, if that's a little too deep for you, um, you could think of it as when you carve out a little space for yourself in your day, whether it's going for a walk or maybe listening to a song that you love. When you settle into that state of ease, uh, generally you show up to the people in your life, your community better. And the more of that that we're doing, I think the better the state of the world would be. So for today's practice, um, you don't need anything. Um, if you have a mat, you could grab a mat. If you have a blanket, you could sit up on a blanket or you could choose to sit up in a chair if getting down to the floor is not an option. And then whenever you choose your seat, go ahead and place your palms down on your thighs and rise your heart to the sky. So we're finding a little bit of length in the spine. If it feels okay to close your eyes, go ahead and close your eyes now. If that feels weird, take a soft gaze down at the floor and just check in with your shoulders. Let the shoulders settle down away from your ears. Notice if you're holding any tension in your jaw, soften there. And then for today's practice, we're just gonna settle into our body. We're gonna use this focus to find a little presence. So just start off by noticing your body in space. Maybe noticing where the breath is causing a little movement in the body. Maybe make sure that wherever your sit bones are touching, really ground them down. Really allow the weight of your hands to be heavy on your thighs. And see if you can take a little bit of control of your breath. So in this theme of ease or easy, can you take a couple easy breaths? And from here, if your eyes are closed, go ahead and flutter them open, start to bring back in the room. Very nice. And then we're gonna take the left hand down to the side and reach the right arm up and over. So we're just getting into the side body a little bit here. You can look up if it feels okay on your neck. If that doesn't feel right, you could tuck your chin down into your chest and just take a couple deep breaths up and down your right side body. Make sure your right sit bone is grounded down to earth. And then on your next inhale, lift yourself back up. This time, right hand comes down, left arm reaches up and across and over. Ground your left sit bone down. Send your heart up to the ceiling or the sky. Take a couple easy breaths into your left side body. And then inhale back to center. Let's take the hands to the knees. Remember, you can do this in a chair if you want. We're just gonna come in for a little bit of circling. So grounding your sit bones down, just start to move yourself in circles. So it could be big circles, little circles, whatever feels good to you, whichever way you start. And then we'll switch the direction the other way. So just circling, keeping your sit bones grounded down. And then from here, find a tall spine again, shoulders are down, interlace your hands, send your hands out away from you. And then with as much bend in your elbows as you need, send your arms up to the sky. So if shoulders are melting down, that might mean your elbows bend a lot. If you have mobility in your shoulders, maybe start to extend up. Take a couple tall breaths into your spine. And then from this tall spine on your exhale, take your right hand outside your left thigh. The left fingertips come back. So a little spinal twist by pulling up in your 
Settle those shoulders down, checking with your jaw. Remember we're being easy and peaceful. And then on your exhale, come back to center. We'll switch it to the other side. So the left hand comes outside, right thigh, right fingertips come back, find length in your spine, and then start to introduce the twist. So all that same stuff, ground your sit bones down, send your shoulders away from your ears, take a few steady breaths. And then release on your exhale. If you're seated on the, seated on the ground and you wanna switch the cross of your ankles, you can do that now. If you're on the chair, make sure the feet are grounded down to the earth. And then from here, taking the hands back to the side, find a nice tall spine. And then we're just gonna start to pick a few apples. So it's similar to what we just did, but you're reaching up to the sky, getting back into that side body a few times. If you don't like apples, maybe you're picking, I don't know, pomelo or something. From here, last exercise we'll do, we'll take our hands to the shoulders. So you have your little chicken wings. And then we'll take the elbows in and out and up. Just getting into the shoulders. Soften your jaw here. And then take the elbows out and up and down. And then place your hands up on your thighs, go ahead and close your eyes again. Find your tall spine, shoulders away from ears. And once again, just feeling into the space of your body. So just noticing and allowing the body to take up space, allowing the body to ground down, allowing breath to come in easy. Go ahead and flutter your eyes open. Draw your hands in a gesture of prayer at your heart. And your task now is to share this sense of ease with anyone that you come into contact with today. So thank you so much for joining me and enjoy the rest of the show. Namaste. The arts. Lift our spirits. Celebrate our stories. Ignite passion. Heal communities. Tear down walls. Evoke joy. Let us dream. And help us see tomorrow. We believe in arts. Hi, my name is Mike. We are here at Grand Park and I am the owner of the Habibi Shack. Public spaces have helped our place, uh, our, our business dramatically. Um, you know, especially here in, in greater Los Angeles, you know, so you have public parks and anywhere you go, there is a good amount of foot traffic and people, the thing about Los Angeles is it's not one ethnicity or one race or one religion. That's why Los Angeles is so unique. Uh, people like to experiment and they like to um, indulge in new things and new experiences. So I have found parks like Grand Park and Silver Lake and Griffith Park, um, you know, essential to our businesses in a sense because it, um, you know, it helps generate revenue and it's a great place to pinpoint foot traffic. Habibi Shack is a, a beautiful branded food truck started here in uh, Los Angeles, California. Um, I was born and raised in Silver Lake and um, basically we serve mama recipe Mediterranean type cuisines with the LA twist to them, some of the LA favorites like avocado toast and um, you know falafel and they all have like this nice little twist to them. Prior to starting the Habibi Shack, I studied at UC Santa Barbara, studied finance and economics. Um, worked in finance for three years and I wasn't about the corporate life so I always had this like uncanny uh, beacon inside of me to start my own business so I said you know let's, let's go for it and I started my own business. Um, the whole concept comes from 
my mother and her family. Um, the recipes come, it's like a generational recipe. And my mom has always been like the best of cooks. And anybody that's ever come to my house has been obsessed with her food. So I stood in the kitchen with her for like six months, uh, captured her recipes and her, the aesthetic of her food, and said, hey, let's bring this to the community, you know, greater Los Angeles. So we started this food truck. We took a old hospital passenger bus and flipped it into a food truck. And um, we jumped onto the streets and said, let's get it. And we went out and started it. I want you to leave the, the Habibi Shack with a cultural experience, a cultural experience of taste. Um, you know, when you bite into a falafel or a wrap, I want you to have a epiphany of history, of you know, just something that has been passed down for generations, for hundreds of years. And I want you to leave our, uh, the Habibi Shack feeling complete and love. And that's what Habibi means in Arabic. Habibi means love or something dearest to you. So. That's why I named it Habibi Shack because when you bite into that food filled with love, you know, obviously it came from mother and you know her family, so it's it's full of love. I want you to leave thinking, hey, you know, I just experienced something cultural, something new, something I've never experienced before, and I am I am complete, I am satisfied. Hey, my name is Mike, and you are watching Grand Park's Easy Mornings. Yo, my name is Slim Jeff. We're live and direct at Graham Park, and I am in artist management as well as a creative myself. Um, I'm a rapper from Los Angeles, Lamar Park to be exact. Public spaces are very important for a community because you know, it's a free space for us to gather. You know, that's very important. Like, especially like black and brown communities in the city of LA, like we don't have a lot of funding and stuff like that to get like, you know, buildings or like rec centers and all these type of things that like could be gathering places. So just having a, you know, open place that's maintained, you know, that's nice that the community can come out to is important because everything happens there you know if there's like political issues or like if there's a protest or you know if you're just hanging out on a sunday like listening to the drum circles um people come and like sell their um wares and like vendors sell like food and you know you get introduced like to independence like at the park in lamer park specifically i was like introduced to how to be an independent creative like through all the different like artists and musicians and jazz players and like, uh, you know, my mom used to sell cowrie shell um, bracelets from Senegal, like in the park, like it like, you know, teaches you about everything you need to know, like about the community, you know, like how to hustle, how to stay aware, um, how to stay like politically like cognizant, you know, it's like how to learn from your elders, like how to slow down and take time and, you know, these days it's important just if you want to have a day off of your phone, you know? Like, I would love for us to have those days where we just like, no, hey, Sundays is the day we gather at the park and check in on everybody's mental health and see how, you know, your neighbor's family is doing and like, see what's new. There's something like scientific, I think, just about like trees and oxygen, you know? Just like taking the time to go somewhere and breathe and like, chill out you know I feel like that's very important to your mental health you know you need to have free space to do that and Los Angeles is one of those cities where thankfully we do have like a lot of green area because I go to other places like you might go to New York or something like that you might not see a park for X amount of block just buildings you know like to have such an open like pretty landscape as Los Angeles you know we should take advantage of that park is everything you know whether it's like a park that has like uh, sports fields and things like that I played baseball at um, Rancho Cienega Park like growing up you know um, play basketball um, just going outside to play football with your friends like play tag football or something like that um, you learn a lot of creative skill sets at the park you know especially like 
me growing up in Lemur Park, like I was telling, um, you know, my friends that, you know, I grew up like listening to music every Sunday, no matter what, we have drum circles, you know? So like, if you're interested in the drums, you can just walk up to the park to like one of the OGs and like, they'll, you know, show you how to play the drum. Like, like that was incredible. Or you might have people playing a saxophone outside or musicians like gathering up, like to have that open, free public space, you know, for the arts to be able to come together is very important because you might not have like a rehearsal studio or something, but knowing that this is accepted and allowed, like, you know, in the park that I grew up at, you know, it probably turned out like a lot of like really like, you know, great musicians, like a lot of really great artists. I love Grand Park. We have the opportunity to um, have like open spaces like this, like in the middle of like our city, you know what I mean? Like a lot of cities struggle with that type of urban planning and stuff like that. But I've performed here, you know, multiple times. Um, like I've just had a, a great vibe at Grand Park, you know, just to be able to come out here and like catch the programming, like the live music or like the DJs or like the dancing, you know, like it's very important, like cultural center of LA. And it's like a central point between, you know, a lot of different neighborhoods, like the East LA and like, you know, like uh, South Central and like, you know, even going more West, like when everybody comes downtown, it's an important aspect of downtown, you know, like it's like one of those places where you can go spend a Sunday afternoon downtown, you know? So Grand Park is like here forever, I hope, you know? Right now in 2020, wellness is more important than ever. Mortality is a scary thing, you know? So you want to think about wellness like in depth, you know, like the same way you think about any other important aspects of your life. I think that like it's much more than a trend. I think that, you know, it's something that's imperative right now, you know, self-care is very important, you know, like knowing like how to actually take care of your body. Like, I think that's like crucial, knowing that like, man, I just need to go like get some shade today, you know, or like sit under the shade and like listen to some new music that came out today or something, you know, like all of those things of just focusing like on yourself um, in productive, healthy ways. Like, I think that that is, is crucial. But if you're not on the wellness tip in 2020, like you slip it because it's like a definite, like you have to have it right now. Yo, what up? It's Slim Jeff. You're watching Grand Park's Easy Mornings. Richard Aviles. I am a performance artist, social worker, and urban planner, and today I get to tell you a little bit about Callejera. So first, let's start with what is Callejera? So Callejera is something that my mother used to call me. Well, actually Callejero, which is the masculine form of the word Callejera. And Callejero basically meant someone that was just out on the street. In Spanish, we have a dicho or a saying, an idiomatic expression that says, Candil de la calle, oscuridad de tu casa, meaning you would light up the streets, but it were always the shadows in your home. And that's where the term Callejera comes from. I particularly wanted to call this piece Callejera to reclaim my queerness as someone who discovered what it was like to be queer at the streets of, of LA. It was only through my bus pass that I had access to neighborhoods like Koreatown, 
Sunset in Vermont, or what we call the Hospital District. You know what I'm talking about, right? The four hospitals in that intersection, yes. And to, to my extent, I grew up on Vermont Avenue, and I only knew that Los Angeles ended where the 754 ended, which was on Vermont and Sunset, until one day, I took the 181 and it took me to the Pasadena City College. And from that moment on, I realized that I was able to fully live my queerness by taking the bus. My bus pass was actually a passport to the city of Los Angeles. So then you're thinking to yourself, well then how does Callejera end up becoming a gender pronoun? Well. There is something very powerful that looks at what happens when we think about the spatial representation of space and identity formation. For example, let's say you have three friends, one from South Central, one from Santa Ana, and one from Fresno. Now, none of you have ever been to any of these other cities, but you come from the hood part of, of the respective cities you begin to talk to one another and you realize that you have the same image of what your neighborhood looks like. That is called the collective consciousness of city, meaning that the spatial representation of a space in a city impacts in how we identify ourselves. So for all of you that have experienced imposter syndrome, we've been told that we shouldn't take up space. And that's where that comes from. Callejera is a reclamation and, and an acknowledgement that all of that is a fallacy. You are a callejera, a callejero, a callejere, a callejerex, someone who can take ownership of the street. So now I want you to think back. Let's close our eyes if you're able. I invite you to come into this space with me. Think of a moment, think of your neighborhood. What are the sounds that you hear? What are the smells? I smell pupusas and tamales in my neighborhood. Do you hear helicopters? What is it that you're hearing right now in your neighborhood? Does it bring you joy? Does it make you frustrated? Does it make you angry? Have you had enough? Hmm. I've had enough. Callejera is a celebration of all of those things. So now I invite you to become your own Callejera right from, the, from wherever you are watching this. I want you to think of the following two prompts. Here is your first one. Think about a moment or an intersection in the city of LA, and if you're not watching in Los Angeles and you're watching in other places, give us any intersection and let us know where this intersection is at and think about a story that you associate with that intersection. So if you remember from Callejera, this is dedicated to the Callejera who stood at the intersection of Western and Adams with a bullhorn in hand and a rainbow flag in the other. That actually comes from a picture that my friend took when I was in high school at the intersection of Western and Adams. So a lot of Callejera embodies all of these stories because we all have them in us. I'm gonna give you some space to process that question. Now let's think about the second prompt. Today we are out here at Grand Park for Grand Park's Easy Mornings. And so public space is everyone's right. You have a right to public space. Demand public space to whomever your elected official is and you demand that space. Public space gives us joy. I hope that Callejera has brought you joy, peace, and resistance. This is dedicated to you, Callejera. This is dedicated to the mind and the sanity that we all deserve. Thank you. <laughs>Stay with me on this journey with Grand Park's Easy Morning. In the next weeks, I'll bring you an excerpt of my first piece called Callejera, a performance of Mi Libertad sang by Monsieur Perine in Grand Park's iconic splash pad. Tune in each Saturday for more conversation, poems, and performances that explore my connections to dance, word, and a little bit of the history of myself as a queer Angelino from South Central. Tune in. I'm 
Karina. I've been a part of Las Fotos Project for two semesters. In my time, I've learned how to express myself through photography. Um, Las, having been a part of Las Fotos Project has offered me so many opportunities that has helped me explore my creativity, but also offered me emotional support that makes me feel welcomed and included. Uh, my name is Gabby. I've been part of Las Fotos Project for three years as a mentor. And being able to work with all these young women has just been incredible. Their, their thirst for experiencing life and getting to do so through their creative work, uh, exercising their creative spirit has just been so beautiful. And these women are so impressive and it gives me a lot of hope for the next generation. <laughs> I'm Karina, I'm from Las Fotos Project. Hi, I'm Gabby and I'm a mentor with Las Fotos Project. And today we're going to be going around the park and learning about the rule of thirds. Okay, today we're going to start with one of the most basic photography composition techniques, the rule of thirds. Karina, what is that? Um, basically, so when you're using a phone, let's say, for example, an iPhone, there's a grid. And basically what that grid helps is by kind of focusing your subject or focal point, usually it would be in the middle, but however, in the rule of thirds, you would want your subject or focal point to be on one of the intersections. This kind of creates your eye not to be so static when looking at a photo and kind of make your eye have like a visual path. We're gonna use this rock here as an example for the rule of thirds. Thing we came to do at the park today was rule of thirds and it's something that we basically do in all of the photos we take so we can pick any subject and we chose a rock. <laughs> it's kind of like an iPhone grid when you see like those different lines. Um, usually when you're taking a photo you would put your subject or focal point in the middle um, but however for rule of thirds you would change that and kind of move your subject or focal point to let's say an intersection or like the side just not anything else other than the middle and that kind of creates like a little visual path for your eye so your eye is not so stoic when looking at a photo. Mm -hmm. It can get boring sometimes. Yeah, it can, yeah, it can. And sometimes you can also put things on different points to get at multiple subjects like a rock here, a building there, the tree is there. It's like spicing things up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And this is also a good time to apply like a low uh, aperture, a big aperture that makes it really crisp on the subject and blurry in the background. Last Photos Project is a community-based nonprofit organization that inspires teenage girls through photography, mentorship, and self-expression. Offering year-round programming, we provide girls with access to professional cameras, quality instruction, and workshops that encourage them to explore their identity, build leadership skills, and advocacy skills, and strengthen their social and emotional well-being. So you can get involved with Last Photos Project as a student, volunteer, mentor, host, or teaching artist. Students can sign up for classes online. Volunteers and mentors can sign up to support our students in the same way. And if you're an artist who wants to teach your own personal brand of photography, reach out. We would love to offer a class with your name on it. And lastly, if you want to host a workshop or don't want to commit to a full class, you can also reach out to do something on our Instagram, lasfotosproject.org.
Good morning. Welcome to Color Healing Sesh with Girl Museum Day at Grand Park's Easy Mornings. My name is Diane Linquist, founder of Girl Museum Day. For those interested in learning what we do, my Girl Museum Day team will be dropping our links to our website and social media to maximize our time. Check us out and give us a follow. Let's begin. This morning, we'll be taking the next 15 minutes to heal together through coloring. If you wish to do so, feel free to create your own background. We left the background empty for you to create your own. It's only fitting that we start with Grand Park's welcome pillar. The welcome pillar is meant to welcome everyone to Grand Park. It does this with the message, the park is for everyone, covering it in 26 languages. Now let's give the welcome pillar some color. All right, first thing you wanna do is select the colors you want to color your welcome pillar. So we're selecting some colors. I think we're gonna make the pillar pink. Now we make these coloring sheets pretty simple so you can add your own creativity to them. Um, we left most of the backgrounds blank so you can add your own kind of background to it. And then you don't have to color in these with full colors. It's up to you how you want to color them. We're just choosing pink because we have an idea or I have an idea of how I want to make this look. So I'm going to sharpen my pencil. Now here's a tip, if you want to get consistent color, it is very crucial that you use pressed out completely on your pencil. That way it is completely full color. The lighter you are with your pressure on the pencil, the lighter the color is going to display. So you have control over that. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section right below. Uh, our team is constantly answering anybody's questions or concerns, uh, anything you want to share, they'll be replying back. Okay, so we're making this tone.
using our pencil to create kind of background that you want to want to create here. We're gonna sketch out what we want to create over here. I'm doing a light stroke because I plan to erase this and maybe trace it with a pencil. So just giving you some light sketches here. You can draw whatever you want to draw for your background. Doesn't need to be exactly what we're doing, but here's an idea you can actually do. These are so simple. They're just little squiggly lines that I'm making and you'll see how that's going to shape up to be. All right, now I'm going to take my pen and kind of just draw my background so I know exactly that's where I want to stop. I'm just tracing the little lines with more fine detail, less rush on that. Those are going to be my background. Now that I have this, I can take my eraser and erase the lines so I can have nice clean lines to know where I want to color in and filter in. So there you have it, um, and now we're just gonna fill in the background with whatever colors you want to use. Now we're doing this really quickly just because I want to show you how to start. You can continue doing your coloring throughout the program. I feel like you don't have to finish it immediately. You can just enjoy the rest of the program and color in. Your sheet. So we're going to fill up this rest here with that color there. I think we're going to pull out another color so we can do this. Well, I'm calling it a sun, so this is my sun. <laughs> Putting that color there. And then for here, I think I'm going to do a nice blue to represent the sky. So, I'm going to do that blue all around here.
So just take your time doing this um, and uh... so we encourage you to take this time to just enjoy listen into the rest of the program and just heal a little bit. Take a moment to just slow down. coloring sheets by tagging us at girl museum day at grand park underscore la and hashtag grand park easy mornings we will be reposting your coloring sheets on social media thank you for joining us and join us again next saturday we'll be coloring grand park's little libraries I always find myself reminiscing about is when I was maybe like 13 or 14 and it was like the first time I ever hiked up to Griffith Park Observatory and we, we usually drive up there and I've never actually hiked the whole trail and I was exhausted by the time I got up there but when I got up there um, I went up there and I got a glimpse of the city from above and that is the first time I ever felt uh, proud to be from Los Angeles born and raised uh, it was the first time I ever felt uh, proud to be a human because I got to stand up there and I got to see the vast city and how beautiful it is, beautiful it is. and I got to um, I, I got to internalize the creation of God you know so that experience at a park will always stay with me forever here in Los Angeles. Uh, one particular experience I remember is the day that Aaliyah passed away um, I remember my whole community gathered at Lamert Park to give like a candlelight um, vigil for her. And I think I had, I was on like Christmas break um, from college and I came back and I was missing home. And I just remember that all the memories I had growing up, anytime something important happened, like in life and politics and music, like everybody from my community would gather up at Lamar Park and we just celebrated Leah's life and like you know people were playing her music out loud and like everybody was just kind of like celebrating and mourning but the important thing that we were all together so it was like a big you know important thing in the community to have a place to gather like that and that was like probably one of my most memorable experiences like at my neighborhood park. So a park what it means to me is um, I think of it in, in kind of two ways. I think of a park as sort of like a big meditation room. So sometimes I love coming to a public green space just to you know feel my feet on the earth, to feel a breeze on my skin, to feel the sun. 
um, maybe hear some sirens here and there. Um, but it is a really nice way to remind me of kind of my greater place in the world, um, to feel, you know, nature, to, um, you know, experience like trees and beauty. And um, that's really always very good for my soul to just kind of feel my feet on the earth. Um, I'm a fellow downtowner, so I really have great appreciation, especially for Grand Park, um, to give me access to some green space. When I think about public spaces, I kind of think of an area to come to distress, and it helps your mental health a lot, getting away from your own environment and having a place that's safe, where you can come with your friends and family and have fun and kind of escape that um, bad or this heartening energy that's happening right now, especially because of COVID. Um, just being here at the park kind of grounds me and kind of reminds me that it's okay. And we just feel like this sort of community looking at everyone else who feels that exact same way. It's not just us. Callejeras have been told that we shouldn't reclaim space, but we say no to that. Think of a place, a public space that brings you joy. How do you reclaim space? Is it on the dance floor? Is it at a concert? Is it in your shower when you're belting your favorite Beyonce song? <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate being able to come out and see that I'm not the only one on this earth, that I'm part of a community. I think it helps us build compassion for one another once we really realize like, oh, we're all in this together. I visually see you, I care for you, and I'm gonna do my best to build a good community for us.